Yeah. So, Mr. Burke, you've dropped one on us this week out of Wally, haven't you? We have indeed. We have indeed. Um, people have been asking for this for a long time, and we were we were thinking, obviously, you know, steam models. So we have had the Manor, we've had Book Jumper, and um, I think some people would be upset that we've gone back to one of those two regions to do this model again. But um, obviously, our new announcement is the 57XX Pannier tanks and the 8750s and the 67XX. So it's um, something that's very close to our heart to have to say. Personally, it's one of my favourite locos ever. I just absolutely love them. Um, there's been a lot of demand on RM Web and other places, you know, for a new generation. It's something that we decided to take on and absolutely go with it. Um, and, you know, first EPs have just arrived. It was just in time for Warley and it was really great to get them out there. So, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. Um, and again, it's it's a bit more Great Western love. But just before we go any further, for people of other regions that we haven't got to yet, we can reassure you, we will get you 100%. Yeah, yeah you're right. There is <laughs> almost a fanatical fan base out there, sort of like for better panniers, because it has been sort of like quite a time since we've seen anything. And there are a multitude of flavours out there, but the 5700s obviously is sort of like one of the, uh, the staples that were all across the, uh, uh, the Western region and uh, Great Western, a uh, massive variety of duties that they fulfilled as well. So, yeah, I can see having lots of logical appeal, but what's the uh, spec like on it? What, uh, what can people look forward to? Well, one of the more important things that you touched on there, that obviously there's been pannier tanks that have gone before. And if anyone knows us from our diesels and even from the Manor and the Book Jumper, we really like to go into different variations and fill gaps. So, you know, some people might say, oh, it's a duplication. We've already have a pannier tank and we would argue, OK, but maybe it's time for a new generation one. But the other thing that we've decided to do is um, we have uh, logo models with the black pay feed, uh, not top feed fitted. Um, obviously, that's going to feature heavily in the launch range. And then we have done a lot of the contractor built locomotives like the North British uh, locomotives and stuff like that when use of rivets on the, the tanks itself. Then obviously we have the large 8750 cab. We also have the 67 XS subclass. So, I mean, they uh, that were they were built without the steam heat or vacuum pipe. So we have that variation in there as well. We've also done some stuff around the cab area. So when they were built, they didn't have external front handrails or bunker steps. Our tooling will cover that as well. The handrail was flush with the cab side and that was built into the beading. And then the steps were later additions. So we have our, the ability to do that. So there's other small ones as well with like the whistle guard and without the whistle guard. So we've taken that kind of process that we've had with the class 37 and brought that into the pannier as well. <coughs> then for specification itself, there will obviously be, we like using our die casting. Um, it will have a cordless motor um, it will also have um, the next 18 uh, DCC ready socket. Um, this will be slot mounted into the smoke box as well, so you don't have to take part the logo to put that together. Um, and then we will have, um, obviously we'll put a lot of effort into the sound uh, installation around. So we'll have a couple of sugar cube speakers in there as well. Um, and then all the stuff like the brake rigging, et cetera, will be um, factory fit. So uh, we'll try and do as much as possible so customers and modelers don't have to worry too much about, you know, taking the bag of bits out and sticking it together. We really want to get just that, just to make it pop with details like that as well. Okay, splendid. What are we looking at price points on it then? So we're looking at a DC slash DCC ready price of one three nine ninety nine, and then we're looking at a sound fitted price of two three nine ninety. That's good actually. There really is uh, sort of like a good price point, uh, I'd say, on it. Yeah, I, I, we're pretty happy with that. Um, obviously, you know, um, we know the price of everything is going up, but we're keeping it. It's consistent with our book jumper. And obviously, um, some GWR models will be familiar with how we do steam lock models now with the manner and stuff like that. And obviously, again, you're getting a lot of bang for your book with detailed differences, a lot of die casting in there as well, which is so when you look at it from that point of view, it does offer a really good value for money um, for what you're getting in a locomotive. And obviously, um, the more the detail difference is the bigger tooling suite and obviously that's more expensive but we really want to just get all those little detail variations in there to offer a new generation pannier tank but also new possibilities with with modelers as well so i think for the price point on what they will go for and the, the fidelity and the detail and the quality that will be we'd like to think it's very good value anyway and what are we looking at date wise and livery wise over the uh, initial run so initial run we're obviously looking at different variations of gwr 
begin with from, um, you know, short button, obviously altering the different uh, Great Western logos into the BR era of lined and unlined BR uh, early crest and late crest. We also have a transitional livery of uh, Great Western uh, livery and lettering, but in British Railways, which is a really fun one to do, even though, you know, it's an area that not many, uh, everybody models, but it's it just makes for a very attractive looking one. We'll also have some Acroscale exclusives that will come up later on in the project as well. So if people aren't sure if that is something is in there for them, for the very first uh, launch run, don't worry, there will be a couple more coming as well. So uh, we'll have that as well. So it's all underway, looking good. When are we going to see them? So the plan is that they will be arriving in stock with us and with our retailers in Q1 2025. So not too far away, um, just over 12 months away anyway. Uh, now we've got to put up with that great Western mob going on about banyards for a year and a bit. Oh dear, oh dear. But, uh, there should be plenty of excellent uh, conversation on our own web about it, all right. And obviously, um, one thing we did enjoy with the manners was we got some excellent feedback from very knowledgeable monitors on our web at every step of the way. And I think they could see, obviously, as well, that we took that on board and we built that into the model and we did make some changes. Um, during the process where stuff where we could either improve or we could add in extra detail variations as well. So we love hearing that and we definitely want to hear that again. If it's And if it's something feasible we can do, then obviously we always look at it. So yeah, I, I expect plenty of tinier dis um, discussion um, from our good friends uh, who are GWR modelers and obviously uh, we do look forward to that kind of feedback too as well. And if you don't behave, I'll set Miss Prism on you. Well, then that's when we're in big trouble, absolutely. <laughs> um, but again, you know, absolutely. If we, we once it's, uh, any of that feedback is, you know, constructive and helpful, and Miss President was fantastic with us with the um, with the manner. So, yeah, bring it on.